So you're on track then to outperform your 2021 targets. How much of this is to do with the UK and the US bouncing back? Uh, and do you expect other regions to also positively contribute? Good morning. Pleasure to be here again. Uh, yes, as you said, we've uh, reported attributable profit of 1.1, 2.1 uh, uh, billion, which is equivalent to a return on tangible equity of 12.3 percent, which is well above our cost of capital. I think the key uh, element of our results is top line growth. We are seeing uh, revenues up 8 percent and uh, pre-provision profit up 13 percent. So it's true that we are seeing generally lower provisions, like in the U.S. and in the U.K., where we had some releases, but generally the results are um, levered on very strong top-line growth. And we are seeing record earnings, as, as you mentioned, in the U.S., which is driven by our consumer franchise, uh, resilient in Latin America, and also very good growth in the U.K., where we earned a return on tangible equity of 11 percent, which is the best uh, uh, result that we've had in many years in the U.K. So I would say that overall strong results all across the board. Good morning, Jose. As you've acknowledged there, that part of your great earnings was the lower provisioning charges you've, you've registered in certain sectors. But what's the outlook for loan loss provisions, given that when central banks roll back their liquidity provisions and they also roll back some of the furlough schemes? Well, I think we, we arrived at this crisis with, uh, I mean, much better prepared because we had a higher level of provisions. And um, we, we've seen a very good performance in all countries in individuals. So credit quality in individuals is uh, actually pretty good. Um, we are a bit cautious on SMEs uh, because it's going to take longer, we think, for the credit cycle to recover in SMEs. But generally, I think we've seen a much better credit cycle at this time that we expect expected a year ago, and that's happening in, in all countries. And as I mentioned, we, we released uh, some provisions in the US and in the UK, but we are generally uh, provisioning significantly less in all countries on the back of this, as I said, as I mentioned, better credit cycle than we expected. What can you tell us about your capital levels, Jose, at this point, and also your thinking around dividends? Clearly, the uh, central bank, the, the European Central Bank, has lifted its cap on dividend payments. So where is your capital position right now versus targets, and what's your thinking on dividends? We are very comfortable with our capital position. We've mentioned that our uh, capital target range is uh, between 11 and 12 percent, so we are above our capital uh, target range uh, right now. Um, we are generating capital organically with this level of profits, and we are accruing uh, capital, we are accruing dividends um, uh, in the region uh, in, in, in equivalent to a payout of 40 to 50 percent, which is our historical uh, dividend policy. And what is left in our balance sheet is more than sufficient to support our customers. So, you know, we feel very, very comfortable and, and it's for the board to decide eventually what the shareholder remuneration will be. But again, we are accruing uh, dividends on an equivalent of 50% uh, of profits. You've announced the acquisition of Amherst Pierpoint, a US fixed income brokerage, and you've done some other kind of bolt-on um, acquisitions. Where do you see the business opportunities for further acquisitions? Well, I think, first of all, our key uh, objective is to grow or organically. We have 150 million customers. Um, we are growing digital uh, transactions at 40% year on year, almost. And 52% of our uh, sales are now conducted digitally. So we have a great opportunity internally to work with 150 million customers and to turn all of them into loyal customers. In terms of inorganic acquisitions, we're always open to analyze opportunities. Uh, but again, uh, this, this is secondary to our key objective, which is uh, to grow with our, our uh, existing customer base. We, we, we're always open to look at bolt-on acquisitions, those like the one you mentioned in the U.S., that actually complement our business. And I think, we, you know, in this particular case, we will be able to get great synergies from their customer base and our customer base cross-selling the products that we can offer. Can I ask you about pay and wage pressure at the moment, Jose? We report about various parts of the investment banking community having to pay more to junior staff. We also think about dislocations in certain European economies in the jobs market more broadly. And I wonder in your business, the type of bank you are at Santander, what kind of wage pressure are you seeing and where? 
Well, we're seeing uh, in some countries clearly more than others. I mean, um, one one country where, for instance, we're seeing significant pressure is Poland, uh, less so in in other uh, markets. Obviously, um, there are, there is pressure coming from the pickup in inflation. We think it's temporary. Everything seems to suggest that next year we're going to see lower inflation. So these pressures uh, may abate uh, over time. But there's some some pockets where we seen we seen some some uh, wage pressures and, and and a fight to get talent. But I think it's in our case, in our particular case, it's not widespread. What do the management changes in Brazil that were announced overnight mean for the uh, direction of the bank? Well, our team in Brazil has done a great job over the last few years. Um, in several years, in several locations, Brazil has been the greatest contributor to the group's profits. So I think the team, again, has done a, a great uh, job. Uh, our former CEO will continue to work as, as chairman of the board in Brazil, will continue to be a member of the group's board, will be engaged in some uh, initiatives, strategic initiatives that we have. Uh, the new CEO has been working at the bank for several years and has been extremely successful running several businesses there. So I think, you know, this is a sort of normal um, evolu evolution of, of a, you know, in, in the corporate life. And I think, you know, the word that would describe these changes is continuity. I think we will see continuity in our strategy and continuity in our, in our evolution in the country. Mm.